The mid-season balance update patch notes for the Drizzle season are here. So now we can take a look at all of the balance adjustments and other changes that Nintendo has made within this latest update, which is version 5.1.0, and it'll be releasing on October the 17th. So let's check all of the changes out. Starting us off, changes to Splatfest. Data relating to Splatoon Splatfest has been added. So of course, this is what we expected to see. They had to release this update before Splatoon, regardless of the balance changes, if they wanted Splatoon to actually work correctly. So it'll be exciting when data miners can dive into this and see exactly everything that has been added in with it. I'm really looking forward to that. Next, we have changes to multiplayer. The terrain in Mahi Mahi Resort has been changed in all modes. So this came as a little bit of a surprise that Nintendo decided to drop a sort of little update for Mahi Mahi. Definitely a good thing in my opinion as the map was not one of the best before, I think that's fair to say. So yeah, they announced that maybe like, I don't know, a few days back. It was right before Splatoon, maybe even on the same day, so it kind of got overshadowed a bit. But yeah, it's a good change in my opinion, I'm glad they're still making adjustments to maps. Specifications for some main weapons have changed. Splattershot Jr. Custom Splattershot Jr. Movement speed while firing is now about 6% faster. L3 Nozzle Nose and L3 Nozzle Nose D. The reduction in damage based on how long a shot takes to reach his target is now more gradual. H3 Nozzle Nose and H3 Nozzle Nose D. The reduction in damage based on how long a shot takes to reach his target is now more gradual. S Blast 92. Reduced the amount of ink consumed by approximately 15%. Made mid-jump shot scatter reduction, which brings it closer to scatter levels while shooting on land, from the intensify action gear ability easier to activate even with a smaller number of gear abilities. The effect gained from equipping the maximum number of intensify action gear abilities will not change. Carbon Roller and Carbon Roller Deco. Widened the angle at which horizontal swings deal maximum damage. Splat Roller and Crack on Splat Roller. Widened the angle at which horizontal swings deal maximum damage. Paintbrush. Reduce the amount of time it takes for ink to begin recovering after swinging the brush for about 1 6 of a second. The reduction in damage based on how far a shot travels before hitting an enemy has been adjusted, allowing the weapon to deal 50.0 damage slash 33.4 damage farther than it did before. Mini Splatling and Zinc Mini Splatling. Reduce the amount of ink consumed by approximately 13%. Hydra Splatling. Movement speed while charging is now about 10% faster. Increased firing duration by roughly 8%. Gluga Julies. The reduction in damage based on how long a shot takes to reach his target is now more gradual. So, some interesting changes in there. Let me know your thoughts about them down in the comment section below. I'm not the most competitive Splatoon player, honestly, so I'm not really going to give too many thoughts on these. I'd rather just share the information plainly as you see it. But I'd love for you to discuss down in the comment section because I'm sure a lot of the more competitive-oriented players will be really interested in some of these changes. Specifications for some sub-weapons have changed. Curling Bomb. Reduce the amount of ink consumed when using the standard ink tank from 70% to 65%. I'm pretty happy about this, honestly. I use the Curling Bomb quite a lot. It's ne definitely not one of the most popular sub-weapons in the game, in my opinion. I feel like a lot of people really don't like the Curling Bomb, but there's just something really satisfying about it. There was one video I made where I got, like, two kills with one Curling Bomb at the same time, and everyone absolutely loved that moment. It's one of my favorite moments on the channel in terms of gameplay. So, I don't know. I've got a special spot in my heart for the Curling Bomb, and I just want to see it succeed, honestly. That's all I want. Specifications for some special weapons have changed. Killer Whale 5.1, increased damage dealt by approximately 17%. Kraken Royale, movement speed while not charged is now roughly 11% faster, that's an interesting one. Trizuka, reduced the damage dealt by explosions from 60% to 53%, so a bit of a little nerf there for that one. Interesting, I don't know how Trizuka players will feel about that, but hey, there's a little nerf. Tender Missiles, decrease the radius of the explosion area that deals 30% damage by approximately 15%. So another nerf for the Tender Missiles, something that probably quite a few people will be happy about, but I'm still surprised to actually see that happen here. I wasn't expecting really to see any more nerfs for these particular two at the moment, but yeah, there you go, Nintendo has cooked them up. Points required for some special weapons have changed. Now, I'm not going to read all of these out because it's, it's, it's just numbers, basically. It's not going to sound very interesting to listen to, so I'm just going to pause on this quickly so you can see it. But of course, you can pause the video if you'd like to, so you can see all of the changes. This update focuses on adding special Splatfest data and making tweaks to multiplayer. So yeah, let's be honest, the reason why this update has come out, I feel like 
quite early this time, not the earliest we've ever seen it, but fairly early in my opinion, is the fact that Splatoon is on the horizon. They need that data in, and the data mines of this update are going to be way more interesting in my opinion than this actual update itself, so stay tuned for those videos later on. We have made it easier to utilize the strength of some main weapons and increase the options for other main weapons that fulfill similar roles. Additionally, we made it easier to battle with main weapons that are paired with curling bombs. We have also made adjustments to some special weapons. We adjust the amount of damage that the Killer Whale 5.1 deals to compensate for the fact that many players are now do used to dodging it. For the Cracker Morale, we made adjustments to give players optional additions outside of a charge attack. For the Trizooka, we made it more difficult to splat opponents by accident, while preserving the abilities for players to splat opponents by aiming well and firing two consecutive shots. That's good. I, I don't know, some people might not like it, but personally I think their reasoning there is at least fairly solid. But hey, again, I'm not the most competitive player, so take what I say with a grain of salt. For Tender Missiles, we made adjustments to reduce instances where players still took damage, even if they made measures to evade enemy missiles. So yeah, I can't complain about that one, honestly. I think... I think that's fine, personally. I'm not a huge fan of Tentile Missiles. I don't like playing against them. I really don't. I think a lot of players feel the same way about that. So I'm not too disappointed in seeing a nerf. Now, the really interesting news comes at the end of this. We plan on releasing the next patch around the middle of November to add Deep Cut Amiibo data. So as we know, Nintendo really doesn't like it when data miners spoil things. They like to hide things. So what they have done is they're going to be releasing another patch in November, which is... Fairly uncommon nowadays, we tend to only see about maybe three patch updates per season. We get the one that's the main update, one that fixes some of the more immediate bugs brought upon that new update, and then of course the mid-season balance patch. But no, we're getting another one in November, which I guess will be 5.2. And yeah, that's going to add the deep cut amiibo data. Probably nothing else, to be honest with you. I really don't think it will be anything else. I think it will literally be that. But that's still pretty exciting. That means we're going to finally learn what their gear is sometime in November. That's not too far away now. I don't know when exactly. Well, they say the middle of November, so maybe like a month from now. But I'll keep you updated when we learn more about that. There is also some patch notes in terms of bug fixes here. There is a lot of those though, and I've typically found when I've made videos going over those, people haven't been too interested in actually listening to them. They tend to skip over those parts of the videos. So I will link it down in the description if you do want to see those, or you could pause on me showing them here. It's up to you. But yeah, here are the patch notes. The main thing to be excited about here is Splatterween in my opinion. The, the, the balances aren't really anything too significant this time around. It feels like a very small update. But hey, maybe that's not such a bad thing. I don't know. Leave your thoughts down in the comments section below, though. I'd love to hear what you have to say. If you made it to the end, be sure to comment Splat Gang so I know you did. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing and turning on notifications for more.